Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome. It's another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And on today's episode, I'm joined by Coach Roland Gutierrez. We're going to talk. We're going to have a great time. This guy's got... I know you've got stories. I can, I can just <laughs> tell yesterday just the way... You, no, there's, there's, there's stuff going on here, and I'm pumped that you're here. If you're new to the show, or maybe if you need a reminder, head on over to WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com for the show notes, the transcripts, all the good stuff that we plug into the background to give you more context on each episode. And if you want to support the work that we do to connect, educate, and entertain the martial artists of the world, go to whistlekick.com, see all the things that we're doing, see the events, sign up for the newsletter, and maybe pick up something in the store and use the code podcast15 to save 15%. Roland, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah. You said it. I, I don't know that I would have said it, but you said yeah, it. You're yeah. a talker. Right? I and, and I could tell that yesterday when, when you were leading your session. And it wasn't just saying words for no, not saying words you as an instructor communicate a lot through words in a way that a lot of folks would communicate they're going to demonstrate you demonstrated with words mm -hmm. I, I i like to really hit everybody on on every medium right so i mean yeah. we've all been to seminars where you're learning something from a pro fighter from a pro this and they're amazing at it right and then they go to explain it you know and and maybe Maybe striking's not not your bag. Maybe grappling's sure. not your bag. And then they're sitting there telling you how to do, you know, this certain overhand right. Mm. And instead of using words, they're like, "Yeah, you just do this." And then, like, well, I'm trying. It's just not. Yeah, yeah, no, do this more. And the 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 lack of being able to explain it verbally sometimes, mm. you know, it, it starts adding a disconnect. And with grappling, it's it, it's so nice to have the body language and feeling with inputs where that kind of answers a lot of your questions. Sure. When, when you feel it, you go, Whoa, okay. And you're, I mean, you know, your, your mind is going to reverse engineer at the mm -hmm. second they feel it and they go, Oh, that's what I want to do. I'm going to do that. So, you know, if you can give a really good explanation, you can, you know, you can explain with, uh, some things that may kind of sit in people's, you know, in the back of their mind a little bit and kind of, Oh yeah, that weird little way he said that, you know, like melt like cheese. I'm gonna melt like cheese. Okay, I get it. Like I melt cheese. I know what that is, you know. So if I can make my body do that, you know, it, hopefully those little things stick with them, mm. you know. And it, it's, you know, when when you're sitting down and you're learning from somebody, there's nothing worse than having a dry person with no, <laughs> no context, no this, you know. Yeah. I mean, you gotta have, you gotta add a little bit of, a little bit of color commentary, and you gotta have, you know. I mean, at least drop some jokes to see if people are listening. Yeah, and and I'll admit, you know, I was observing yeah. what you were doing. You know, part of my job is to, mm -hmm. to make sure everybody's happy, right? Yeah. Um, which is also the the upside of that is like I get to see everything. I don't have to choose yeah. which which sessions I'm going to. I I get to see all of them. I don't get to do really any yeah. of them. But it was clear from the beginning you were going to be a talker. I was nervous. Mm -hmm. I was nervous, right? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. most people that talk through a session aren't getting engagement from people. And that was the thing I noticed really quickly was the people in your session were super engaged mm. from your words. And I was like, oh, there's something interesting here. There's something interesting about yeah. this. And then watching as you connected those dots with, admittedly, I think you spent more of your time talking than, than mm. they were doing which initially sounds mm -hmm. like somebody's going to get so much less out of it. Mm -hmm. And I think they got more out of it. And that blew my mind. Oh, I appreciate that. I, I got lucky. I mean, they like, I, I, I don't think you got lucky. I think that's skill, man. No, they, you know, it, it's, it's interesting. Cause I, you know, from, from, well, let me, let me preface everything. Sure. I hate teaching. I don't like teaching. What? I'm not I'm seriously. Not, I swear. I, when, when we opened our gym, um, somebody, you know, one of the guys that we were training with, uh, you know, he goes, Hey man, are you excited about the gym? You know, opening I'm like, yeah, I'm super excited and did it. And they, yeah, man, yeah, I know you love teaching. I'm like, I don't. I would much Dude, rather be teach? in. Well, because you're supposed to. I mean, it's <laughs> if, if you're the highest belt there, then you should but, go. <sighs> you know, but I, but the, the the real reason for for teaching. I mean, I, I do get a satisfaction out of it, and and I've I've actually come to see um, the satisfaction just recently because before it was just putting in work, getting partners to the to a, a level to where they were making me better, mm -hmm. right, and just kind of building building a pool of good training partners. Sure. And then, you know, you just kind of blink and they all become your friends and family friends and, you know, and you just can't imagine your life without them. Right. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, 
you know, you're like, well, I got to open a gym in my town. There's no gym in my town. And, mm. you know, it, should, it shortens my commute. It makes everything good. And so in a way, sense, it was selfish. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, there's a, you know, there's a, uh, a, a moment where you just kind of sit back and you look around and you, none of these people would know, know each other mm. if it wasn't for jujitsu. And then you watch people lose a bunch of weight. You watch, watch people get significantly less killable, right? Mm. Cause they're doing jujitsu, right? And you watch them get comfortable in uncomfortable situations. And yeah. then you just, you're watching all this happen and it plays out in front of you. And you know, when you're coaching, you know, you, you have, you have moments where everyone's drilling and you can just sit back on the wall and just watch it all. And that fills my cup mm. watching like it's, even though it is jujitsu, right? And I love jujitsu. I love it, but it's just bigger than that. It's mm. community. These people now feel a belonging, have a team, you know, mm. a family. Like we refer to everything as a family. It's like, hey, these are your family. Like, like you wouldn't let your cousin go do this and not tell them, hey, what are you doing? You know, to be like, no, 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 get back over here, right? You wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't give family the advice. Yeah, you should take as much time off. Nah, take a break. Don't do that. Don't. Mm. don't. No, no, work harder, do more. You know what I mean? So like, it, it's a, it's a real good positive peer pressure with each other. And, uh, and, and when you sit back and you see it, it was, it's probably one of the first times where I sit back and I'm always worried about relevancy personally. Like, I'm like, man, I'm like, I never have any time, you know, like I compete maybe once a year, you know, like I never have time to go visit other gyms and kind of do all the, you know, shaking hands and kissing babies and stuff. And, you know, and, and, you know, part of me feels like, oh man, I, I should be doing that. But uh, my responsibilities for to to be with everybody, facilitate. You know, just like you were doing, you did a great job facilitating, and everybody felt welcome, and it was so yeah, nice. And most of that was Jen. Yeah, you know, it was great. You guys did a great job, and and that, you know, I I just feel more like a facilitator to where like, no, oh, this is this is my town. You know, these are you know, it, it's my responsibility to make everybody feel welcome, and then you know, create an environment where people want to work hard. You know what I mean? So you talked about teaching rather than enjoyment, mm -hmm. a feeling of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Describe that. Say, say more about what satisfaction is versus enjoyment. So the enjoyment, I like for me, when I when I'm truly enjoying jujitsu, personally at a selfish level, mm -hmm. it's um, you know it's kind of like being at the beach and you're just kind of in the white water fighting fighting the water mm -hmm. and just you're, you're you're half going with it half finding your way through it. You're just having a blast. There's no really rhyme or reason, but you're, you're in a blender and mm. you know, the ocean has you and it is doing what it wants, but you're surviving and enjoying it. Mm. And you're not in a level of panic, right? Because of a certain level of competency of, of swimming. And, you know, same thing with surfing and bodyboarding and stuff. Right. And, and I, I grew up in Southern California. So when I went to the beach, like that was what kids did. They mm. went and, you know, just sat in the breakers, the little waves and just had fun and splashed around. Right. And it was just be out there for hours jujitsu the same thing you're in a blender you're in the everything's uncomfortable and you have so many techniques that you just kind of get lost and you time is so relative right so you'll just be in there going through your match not really winning or losing but and, and not concerned with that but trying to improve your movement mm -hmm. and when you feel it there's there's just so many good good moments where you move you sweep you get on top and you're like nice but you can't enjoy it too much because the next wave is going to kind of smash you right so then you're like you know, you, you, you kind of limit your, you know, your, your, uh, you know, your triumphs and your failures, but the learning is, is so consistent and linear that you just feel like there was so much value in that moment. And then you just blink and then all of a sudden, like, wow, it's a 15 minute round. Like it's fought for 15 minutes. Like that was fun, you know, and then on to the next round and on to the next round. And, and the, that's probably my favorite is when you're just like, when you just, you're in this, in this flow state, like you're still going hard, you're still doing all the stuff but there's no thinking like you're just, you're a part of the fight. The, the, word, the word that's coming to mind as you're describing this is surrender. Yeah. There's yeah. an element of surrender to the process where you're talking about the waves sure. where you're talking about, you know, somebody trying to mm -hmm. crush it. Yeah. Yeah. You have, you have to, you have to accept what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. And that, and I think that's, that's my favorite part about jujitsu is, you know, it, and I mean, and it's a cliche being comfortable, you know, with being uncomfortable, but it, it, it really comes to, you know, just, just grinding and, and, and going through a process to where when you are, you know, your attack is your defense is everything you have to, you know, you, you can't have this, this, this predetermined chain in your mind, mm -hmm. you know, 
and, and, and a lot of martial arts, I think, have, you know, have goals and they and they sell the goals. Same thing with jujitsu. They, they sell the goal. Right. You know, they sell the, oh, you know, we're we're best at takedowns. We're best at, you know, the guard and attacking from the guard. We're best at this, best at that, blah, blah, blah. But if you really, really are in it, you the first thing you have to submit to is, hey, I, I'm in a fight. Mm. <laughs> I'm in a fight. This is where I'm at. Nothing else matters. And that that accepting of what you're doing of, I got to fight for my back. Mm -hmm. I can't be upset that I'm on my back. I can't be upset. I can't have this emotional process of failure and victory and failure and victory. It's exhausting, right? Cause like emotion burns twice as mm -hmm. hot as, as regular effort. So if you do that, you burn out, boom, done. So just going through this flow state of, Hey, what is, is what is and being totally present. And it, and it doesn't, it doesn't burn as hot, which the nice part is after the fact, you can kind of look back and go, wow, that was a really good, that was a good session. That was a good this, that was a good that. And and it it sits better and you learn faster and you train yourself. And this is something that, that you know, like with the adults and with the kids, you know, really harp on is, you know, everybody has this, this, this emotional loop, you know, and we, we just kind of want to get rid of that because it doesn't help you anywhere. Like feeling sorry for yourself doesn't, doesn't help you. Yeah. And, and feeling like there's a failure doesn't really help you. doesn't, I mean, you know, you lose a match, nobody cares. You know what I mean? Right. Nobody cares. Like, the world yeah, keeps turning. The world keeps turning. You know what I mean? I mean, every time we go to a tournament, you know, there's always a handful of people that are just, Oh man, I just, I'm so nervous. What are you nervous about? And they go, well, I mean, if I lose, I, I, I go, do you know who won your division last year here? And they go, I don't nobody cares. Nobody cares. And then when you win it, no one's going to care either. Yeah. I said, no offense. Out of all these people here standing there, none of them are watching your match. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's true. Oh, and I'm it's like, so you, you know what I mean? You, you just, you just got to go in there, have some fun, right? Respect your partner. Cause they're going to highlight some things you got to work on later. Yeah. And Hey man, it is what it is. Just let it ride. Yeah. And in that, you know, the emotional process of, of having, you know, feeling that, you know, you got beat or when some people go into processes, Oh, I got cheated the rules or, you know, and they start deferring all this stuff. And Hey man, own what happened, right? Be present. Own what happened. It is what it is, right? Respect your your opponent because your opponent's your teacher, mm -hmm. and no one's going to understand you as much as that guy or girl, right? Mm -hmm. That person does exactly what you do every day, and they get their enjoyment out of that. They understand you more than anybody else, right? You go to Starbucks and go get a coffee, and that person's going to look at you like you order. You know what do you what do you where are you on your way to? Oh, I'm going to jujitsu. What's that? Oh, it's like murder in pajamas. They're going to look at you like you're crazy, you know, and I, I don't blame them. Right. But, you know, like what, you know, when people think about tournaments, you know, and, and stuff like that, it's a, you know, a progression in a, in a competition setup. It, it's really unnatural. It's really unnatural. The only person you compete with is yourself. And I think jujitsu does the best. It, it's, it's one of the best conduits hands down. And I mean, you could probably get it from ping pong if you really, really thought mm -hmm. about it, but you know what I mean? I mean, martial arts is the best. Because if you mess up, you know, and you, you know, you think you have a, a, a chain of, 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 or a sequence together and then all of a sudden crack, you get cracked upside the head. Wow. All right. Maybe my hands were high. <laughs> right, right, right. Maybe I should have done a little better. Same thing in jujitsu. Hey, next thing you know, you can't breathe. Uh, okay. All right. Tap, restart, pivot and go. So you try to eliminate the, uh, you know, the, the process of, you know, regret and, oh, I'm terrible. I'm not good enough on this. I'm that. Oh, I got to talk to my therapist. Oh, I need my psych meds. Oh, and then I come back around and then, well, you just lost a month. You know what I mean? How about just, okay, and pivot and then go forward. No emotion. Hey, you win, you lose, hand up, hand down, doesn't matter, on to the next one. Yeah. And, you know, the takeaway from that is not just jujitsu. It's, you know, I mean, things are going to happen in life. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, we always, we, we, I mean, especially with the parents, I talk to talk with the, the parents that train. I go, hey, this isn't about jujitsu. None of this is about jujitsu. None of it. it has nothing to do with jujitsu. And I'm like, this is all for life. Like, you know, you, you're going to get smashed by that brown belt and he's going to beat the snot out of you, right? And you're expected at the end, after you tapped a thousand times, right, on the whistle to go with the next person and like that never happened, right? And pivot and just go. And, you know, where, where's the carryover to life? You know, somebody's going to pass away in your life. Somebody's, you're not going to get the job. You're not going to, you know, you're going to get looked over a bunch of times. You're going to, you know, an injustice is going to happen to you. And what do you have to do? You pivot and continue to go forward and be useful, 
right? You can't just sit there and wallow, you know, in, in your in your own self pity. You can't do that. It doesn't help anybody, right? You have to be useful. So those things are are, you know, basically on display on the mat every day when you grind. And that's the thing is, you know, we we've, we've had people come to our gym and, you know, I mean, we had black belts come to our gym and just go, hey man, was that warm up for me? Like, I haven't. You know, I, we had a black belt. It's a really good black belt, you know, super nice guy. And he was like, I've never done a warm up that hard in 15 years. And I was like, oh, thanks. What? And he goes, was that for me? And I go, no, it was, it's Tuesday. <laughs> and he goes, well, you guys getting ready for competition? I'm like, no. And he goes, well, what was that for? And I go, to get ready for Wednesday? Life. Yeah, for, for Wednesday. Yeah, I mean, literally for, for the next day and the next day. I, I'm like, we, we don't have a lot of time. So... You know, I don't lift weights. Most of the guys that train with me don't lift weights. We're on time. You know, we have full-time jobs and families and this and that. When we're on the mat, you got to get it all in, mm-hmm. right? So it's it's a pressure cooker. And, you know, it's it's not for everybody, but it, it, it really does. You know, the nice thing is after, again, getting back to we get our gym open and sitting on the side of the wall and watching all these people come together and be more resilient and just happy and and all the and, and watching the community bond, you're just like, okay, I guess we're doing the right thing. <laughs> I guess I guess this is what we're supposed to be doing. Yes. So yeah, it seems that everybody kind of gets with it. You know the the philosophical stuff that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Certainly heard people say these things before, but I, I get a different sense from you that this is also how you live your life. One hundred percent. One. Where where does that come from? Is that was that handed to you by family or past instructors, or is this stuff that, you know, after you banged your head against the wall enough times, you started to to understand these things? Um, you know, I was super lucky to have good mentors in my life. If if anything, anything, um, I chose good mentors. Mm. That if I have any attribute, that's that's it. And you know, you know, my father was best dad in the world. Mm. I mean, he was the best guy, the best. Um, I, you know he the way he lived his life was was a really good blueprint the way him and my mom you know they the way they lived and parented was just a great blueprint you know i mean just i had good examples and then you know when i went to high school I went to the same high school that my older brothers did and my little brother did you know we all went to the same high school big giant high school and you know my older brothers you know they were they were kind of polar opposites they're they're two half brothers and uh and they're you know, they're, they're quite a few years ahead of me. So I grew up knowing that I was going to play football for those coaches. I was going to mm-hmm. wrestle for these coaches and these coaches knew who I was and they were, you know, chomping at the bit, hoping that I would live up to them. So, you know, my older brothers were my heroes. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and then it was, it was real easy to walk in and then I meet these coaches who were phenomenal. Like coach Pendleton, would, I, him and my son, or him, me and his son were best friends. We we're both the same grade. We came up together and you know, it was, you know, he was such a good coach. Coach Meek was such a good coach. And these guys were just, they were very good leaders. Mm. And, you know, I remember losing, losing a football game, right? I was a, I was a middle linebacker and it was my junior year, I think. And uh, we lost a, a big pivotal football game. Excuse me. We won a pivotal football game, but we gave up like 20 some odd points or something. We should have never gave up anything because our defense was, they're monsters. And, you know, so the offensive bus is, where we're going back to the gym and or back to the to the locker room and offensive bus goes to the locker room and then we go right back to the field and I, and we knew he was disappointed and we ran i think it was like 28 or 30 gassers right so we ran for hours and the parents pulled up like hey what's going on and they knew not to cross him so they all stood at the fence and watched us run until we threw up we won you know so like the efforts that we did and the how he pounded in leadership and And, and it it was, you know, that, that kind of carried me through. And then when I became a cop, um, you know, I, you know, my mentor in in policing was, you know, was Nick Sessions, you know, and and he recently passed away a couple years ago. And, uh, but, but he was, he was a great guy. And I remember coming out of the Academy, probably at my least athletic, I mean, on paper, I was probably the, the person you don't invest in. And, you know, I'm, I literally walk out of the academy with all the other recruits and, you know, I'm in a place I'm not used to, you know, Arizona, you know, I just moved from Southern California to Arizona and he just opened his arm. Come on, boys, come with me. And mm-hmm. so next thing you know, we're under his wing and we're learning, you know, he, he just showed 
the way that you mentor people to, to get them to elevate themselves. And then, uh, and then that was right around the time um, I ended up going into narcotics. I was a narcotics detective and I was on the SWAT team and uh, <clears throat> I was kind of worried, you know, I, cause I wasn't in great shape. I didn't wrestle my whole life. I was an athlete, but I just really let myself go for a handful of years after, after college. And then, uh, and then, you know, I was like, man, I'm gonna get killed buying drugs undercover. I suck at this. So next thing you know, you know, I meet Rick and I mean, that's a whole story in itself and, uh, started jujitsu. And I remember I'm like, I will, will never stop jujitsu. I'm like, why'd you start? Um, cause I, I literally, I was afraid I was going to die you know, get, get killed behind drugs and recovery. Cause I sucked at it. I wasn't, but, but why jujitsu? Um, I think, you know, growing up, um, I did a little bit of Kempo. I did, or for about two years, uh, Chinese Kempo. Um, and then Ed Parker and, and th then I was with an Ed Parker school and this is all when I was like, like young, like adolescents and teens. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I did Muyedo with, uh, at Tiger Yang's facility in Fullerton. I lived down that way and it was super cool. And I remember I was just so confused though, uh, about foot sweeps and everything stopping at the ground mm -hmm. because I was a, I was a stick and ball sport guy. Mm -hmm. So my family, we all wrestled and we played football and I was a middle linebacker and a running back. So everything ended up in a crash and on the ground. Right. And I was like, oh, I know this, but this isn't really mm -hmm. translating, right. The distance fighting. And it was fun. I, I enjoyed it. Um, but I think my parents always treated it like it was, like it was, uh, like something fun to try, but that we're not sticking with it. Like, like we are football, wrestling, you know, baseball, hockey, like, you know, in, 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 in the, in, in the major sports. And it was kind of funny because I, I enjoyed martial arts more because I felt like they had a better mentality mm -hmm. towards growth because it's lifelong. They never stop. So there's no, there's no time limit. So you're not, you don't get these weird pressure. There's no seasons. No, there's no seasons, right? Like, yeah. And, and, and it's less gaming the game and more, you know, learning, like lifelong learning. And, um, and, and I, and I liked that. And I liked the, there was a nobleness about it. There was a, I mean, even at times a chivalrous, you know, a chivalry about it. And it, I, I just really liked the honor culture. I liked it. And then, you go to stick and ball sports, you know, and you got, you know, parents losing their mind, you know, and it's not uncommon to, you know, especially like, you know, you go to go to a wrestling tournament, you know, and you got a coach who's, you know, 400 pounds and hasn't worked out in God knows how long and he's screaming at his kid who's cut weight for, you know, the last four days and, mm -hmm. you know, and completely unhealthy and, ah, you know, screaming at him and then is disappointed at a loss. And it's like, Hey man, like this, we got to fix that. You know, like that, that, that angle is just that math good. doesn't balance. It doesn't math. That math doesn't math at all. Yeah. And, and that was one thing that, you know, my dad, I remember, you know, having all these, these good mentors, um, you know, I, I, I kind of caught them in their primes and then kind of systematically, they all kind of started passing away and it kind of sucks mm. because at a certain point, you know, you watch all these people give so much and, you know, they take time away from their families, they take time away from their friends, and they're, they really give a lot of themselves for no return, nothing expected. And that's, and, and I think that's important, but I didn't learn that until I saw it all a bunch. I mean, I saw it over and over and over, you know, and when you see it over and over and over, you know, it's important. Well, I can't just talk the talk. I have to walk the walk, mm. you know, like my dad, you know, he, 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 I pretty much do parenting in life very similar to what he does, except you know, he took his vacation one hour at a time to make sure we could get to football practice. And we would change from football, you know, from out of our football pads into our wrestling shorts and go from wrestling to football. I mean, we were, that, that's, you know, four boys. I mean, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. And uh, in that, you know, he neglected himself. And my dad was a good athlete in his day, but just focused solely on business so his sons could do what he always wanted to do yeah. never pushed us right but he always made sure we didn't quit and that was that was really it, it was a it was a good distance the bad part of it was though is that you know once he got into his you know 40s and 50s you know he his health wasn't wasn't good and then it was just one episode 
you know, and then next thing you know, it's, you know, it's sliding down a hill. Right. So when I watched, when I watched him, um, when I watched him get sick, I was like, well, I think I'm, I'm not going to push. I'm going to pull. Right. So I'm going to, I'm going to just tell my kids, Hey, if you don't want to be on the mat, that's fine. You got to come to the mat. You got to be here. You got to be at the gym. Mm. So I'm training regardless. And then, um, luckily it's paid off. You know, my kids have fallen in love with the mat and I don't, I think it's, it's less mentoring and coaching and probably more, um, you know, letting people discover and kind of find their, their happy place on the mat. Like mm -hmm. my, my oldest daughter, she wrestles at, um, Wayland Baptist university and, uh, she's a scholarship wrestler, wrestler there and she never wrestled growing up. She only did jujitsu mm -hmm. and our jujitsu, all wrestling, all jujitsu, all judo, just everything. And I begged her freshman year, come on, please wrestle. Like, please. This is kind of our family's thing. Right. And, uh, so she, she, she was like, okay, fine. You know, she wrestles within eight months. She's ranked in the top. She's ranked number nine in the nation. And they're like, where did this girl come from? Right. And so, you know, she goes on and continues to wrestle, gets recruited and all that stuff. And for her, you know, her, her reset is, you know, she's inherently kind of, kind of mellow. She likes to, well, you know, I mean, I don't need to do that. I can just, and she like minimize herself. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, you know, me, me and my wife, especially my wife, you know, push her. Hey, you're not regular. Per you're not a regular person. This is what you do. Stop. Stop going against what you do. This is what you do. And then next thing you know, she just owns it. And then, you know, now when she comes out of wrestling season, she goes, oh, man, I just need to relax and just do jujitsu this off season." And I'm like, <laughs> relax? what are you talking about? It's the hardest thing in the world. This, but... this is such a weird sentence. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think I've ever heard anyone make that sentence yeah. before. Yeah, and she says it all the time. She goes, ah, wrestling's just so, ah, there's just so much happening. It's just, it's like jujitsu compressed into this, like, high-pressure ball. And then, uh, you know, jujitsu, I can take my time. I can... You know, I can, I, I can think, I can feel more. And I'm like, it's pretty healthy. You know, a lot of kids, you know, in their twenties, I mean, you know, they, they get pressure, they drink, they yeah. get a codependent relationship. They, you know, try a bunch of weird shit. She has, I mean, you know, thank, you know, thank God she hasn't done any of it. And she's just, Hey, just go to the mat, you know, the mat, the mat provides. And then mm -hmm. um, my oldest son, Zachary, he's, you know, he wrestles for wording and, you know, I mean, that's a, that's a murderer's row in there, man. I mean, you know, they're, you know, recurring state champs. They have, I think, six sitting state, individual state champs. They sent 23 people to the state tournament last year. I mean, they're monsters. I mean, they're, they're, their coaching is just phenomenal. All their coaches are just unreal, super great people, great families. All the wrestlers are great people, you know, and he knows that, I mean, you know, he's, he's sitting at all the weights with all these guys that have been wrestling all this time. And, you know, he doesn't complain. He doesn't whine. He just, oh, I'm on the mat. Just work. I'm just going to work. I'm going to outwork. I'm going to outwork myself. He never mm -hmm. compares himself to anybody. And he just continually pushes himself. And all those kids are really good kids. And they really push themselves to be better. And they don't really, I've never seen them compete against each other. Ever. Mm -hmm. It's the craziest thing. They all, they all wrestle. They all beat the snot out of each other. And when they get up, they're never mad if they lose to a, to a, a, a fellow wrestler they're, you know, they're mad at themselves, not being able to do something, mm. you know, whatever it's, it's, it's a very, it's one of the healthiest wrestling rooms I've ever seen. And, you know, the coaches, the parents I and mean, parents are phenomenal. And no, no wrestler becomes that without a healthy family and support system. So a lot of great families. And I mean, it's one of the reasons why we moved to Oregon is just really good people, man. I mean, all their heads are on straight, good, good folks. And, you know, Zach is one of the healthiest kids at his age. I mean, shit, I don't remember how I was when I was his age. I was not it was crazy. You know what I mean? There's no way, you know, and you know, he, he just, I mean, he continues to impress me all the time. I mean, it's, it's pretty impressive. And, and then my younger ones, you know, they, I mean, they happy kids that just, they're on the mat all the time. So, you know, they don't have time to, to really get in real trouble because they're always on the mat. So, um, and they enjoy it. They, they have a great time. And, you know, Loudon is my youngest and mm -hmm. he's, you know, he, he's at times, you know, Oh, my belly hurts my this, my that. Okay. He was here. He was here. The yeah. little one. Yeah. yeah. And when, when he really focuses, he's a monster. He's one of the first 
you know, seven year olds I know that can really play De La Hiva really well, you know, De La Hiva Garden. I'm like, wow, most kids can't really wrap their head around that. And he loves it. Go figure. And then, um, and then my, my youngest daughter, Sophia, you know, she loves jujitsu, but I think she loves it mostly for the camaraderie. And I think she's learning jujitsu as a peripheral, thing. Mm. but she loves being in that environment because it's healthy. There's not, you know, what you see, you know, in, in seasonal sports, you yeah. know, it's just cause it's a big family. So, and, and it's, you keep coming back to that word family. And if, if we mm-hmm. think about the sports that you've brought up, mm-hmm. those are all very close knit sports. Football is yeah. incredibly close. Yeah. Police work. Yeah. It, it is, it is a, it's a family. It's a family. It's a yeah. fraternal order. It's a brotherhood, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And the way you're talking about your school that you, didn't want to have because you yeah. don't want to teach, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It, it, it's, it's the community and the yeah. recognition. It sounds like the recognition that, you know, I want that community. I value that community more than I don't want to teach. Yeah. Pretty, it pretty much. Family I mean, that's, first. that's, that's exactly it. And I mean, I, you know, I've, I've been, you know, I've taught at gyms that, you know, valued, you know, community very much so, but valued it in, you know, with, with different core tenants, you mm-hmm. know, that I didn't really like, I didn't really associate with and they, they just weren't, they didn't fall within my value set. And I think that this was an without event. naming them. Can you talk a little bit about what those are? Yeah. You know, like, I, I think it's really easy. Um, I think it's really easy to, you know, kind of see the, you know, see to kind of be the hero and be like, Hey, you've been a victim. I want to make you not a victim. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, I think where the world is now and just kind of, you know, you have a lot of views that, you know, people kind of sit in that victimhood too long and they value it too much. And, you know, and, it, and it's, it, you know, it, it's for not, a lot of people. It's the only way they get recognition. It, it's, it, it it's, is. it's, it's a trap. It's lit- it is a trap. It is a trap. And, you know, I understand, um, I, I understand how it's easy to fall into that trap, but, you know, it's, it's more, you know, the, 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 the importance has to be put mm-hmm. on getting out, of, getting out of the victimhood. Right? right. And not, not fostering it, not, um, you know, I mean, you can't ignore it, but you know, there, there's, you know, there's a, there's a certain way, but in every community is different. Right. And that community wasn't exactly my community, but, um, it was a lot of really good people. I mean, phenomenal people. I, I'm still friends with most of them today. Um, but they are, you know, they, they definitely have a different set of, of values that, you know, I just couldn't, I couldn't hang with. Mm-hmm. And, and that's okay. I mean, everybody's, you know, everybody's, you know, teach their own and wish them all the best. But for, for me, for me to kind of, you know, express my jujitsu, my idea for, um, you know, how I feel jujitsu should be represented. It should definitely be, you know, non-political, non, um, you know, uh, Leave it at the door. Yeah. All I mean, the, yeah. Stuff. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, the, the, it's not, you know, the, this is where we're all the same. And, um, and, and also it's hard. It's, it's supposed to be hard. You know what I mean? Like I, I can't, I can't really ever get on board with, um, notional things, right? I'm not a huge fan of notional things. Like notionally speaking, we could do this. Well, I'm notionally speaking, I could get hit by an asteroid right now. Like this, this goes a lot of ways, right? I really do appreciate the fact that with jujitsu, nothing is notional. It's all felt a hundred percent. Right. And it's hard because, you know, so much in life you can't, you can't simulate, but in jujitsu, you can, you can simulate, you know, you, you can do most of it. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't, there's some things you can't, you know, you can't practice, you know, at full speed, um, you know, in a fight, you know, people are talking about eye gouging and biting and hair pulling and stuff. I mean, Hey, cool, man. I mean, you know, whatever. I think those are, those are things of opportunity, you know, can't drill that, you know? Okay. But you know, same thing with, with stand up martial arts, you know, that are, that are super effective, but you clang shins at a hundred percent a couple times. I mean, you're out for a few weeks, man. I mean, that, you could be out for longer than that, yeah. but in jujitsu, you can go a hundred percent and just tap it's over and then start again and then tap it's over. And that's kind of why I think, Jiu-Jitsu kind of edits itself. The technique edits mm. out the things that just kind of don't work and it adds things that kind of do work, you know? And that's, that's also one thing, you know, I, I think more, more jujitsu nowadays has become, um, a little more defiant, a little more rebellious mm. to kind of mainstream jujitsu because, you know, you get, 
you know, hear people, you know, they're busting their ass, they're grinding, and then all of a sudden they, they get caught in a submission and it's supposed to be a blood choke and they get a neck crank a little bit. They're like, oh, that was a crank. Well, you tapped. <laughs> you said uncle. It is what it is. You know what I mean? It's a real thing. I mean, were they going for that? No, but it is what it is. But it worked. Yeah. So that little, that protest, that's that's part of what we're trying to iron out. Jay, just own it. It is what it is. Continue. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that, you know, a lot of the like mainstream jujitsu is still kind of, they, they have these kind of, you know, pitfalls that they kind of feed into, you know, oh, that, you know, this isn't that, that is this. Well, what makes you the authority? Right. You know, so. jujitsu seems to be going through some of the things that what's collectively called them stand up arts, right? Went mm -hmm. through a few decades ago, uh -huh. you know, around some of the politics and, and, you know, well, the way we do it, right? And, and, mm -hmm. You know, and I, I find that interesting because, as you said, you you can push a lot closer to that 100%, mm -hmm. you know, and more frequently. Yeah. And, and that, that does lead to quite a bit of evolution. I think some people that maybe they physically are past their prime mm -hmm. that don't want to keep grinding. They want right. to ride on what they did, not what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They're trying to, to put, push that wave back, mm -hmm. which obviously isn't going to happen. No. And, you know, I think a lot of it too is a little, I mean, a little nationalistic, right? I mean, mm. you know, calling it Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and there's a big debate, you know, just call it Jiu Jitsu, right? Oh, okay. There's a lot of, yeah, well, it's Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Well, it's American Jiu Jitsu. Well, I, you know, when you start getting into branding and stuff like that, you know, I, I feel like some of that stuff's a little disingenuous, you know, I mean, the Gracie family has done so much for martial arts in mm -hmm. the last hundred years. I mean, they've, they've, you know, they've been the impetus for undeniable so, uh, for so much. And I mean, you got to, you nothing but the utmost respect, you know, but you also have to, you know, really what they did was they opened up the view, right? They, they, they scaled out the view where everyone's looking, Oh, look at, look at jujitsu, look at this. Right. And it's like, Hey, Hey, pan out, pan out on yeah. grappling. Look, you know, you have, you know, you have American wrestling, right? Folk style wrestling. Where did that come from? Did that, did they ever cross paths? They did cross paths. Right. And, and, and where did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu come from, from judo and at what time and what, mm -hmm. what evolution that judo was going through. And, and when you start looking at, at grappling just on a big scale, there was so much going on and the story's romantic. It is wonderful. And there's so many players and the players are great characters. I mean, why, why we just neck it down to the Gracie family? Right. And, 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 or, it's or, it, well, right. And, 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 and it who's, requires less work. It does. It does. But, you know, the bad part is, is that, you know, you lose the nuance. Right. And that's something that I really appreciate about jujitsu. Um, you, you can basically in your lineage go back to, to, uh, some people will go back to Carlos Gracie and they'll stop there. Um, some people go like for us, you know, we go all the way back to Jigoro Kano because without Kano, we wouldn't have, we, you know, we wouldn't, wouldn't have what we have. Right. Yeah. So our, you know, your lineage is cool because, you know, well, I don't believe anything's by accident, right? Nothing's by accident. So when you show up, you know, it's, you know, you're a part of the novella now you're part yeah. of the story. And so you place yourself right there. And you look back and you, when you look at these individuals who were the professor of the professor of the professor, you know, it's, it's important. And, you know, I've never really considered myself such a traditional guy, but this was one of the first times that the gym culture that I'm used to. And then like the honor culture from martial arts that I've always, always yearned for smashed together and just in, in a really, really nice way. Uh, the uh, melody, they work together where it's just, it, it makes sense. And it's, it's hard um, when you, like, when you see people, you know, come into this culture at first, there's like this moment of like, I don't know if I bow, I don't know if I, they, they'll come from Filipino martial arts, they'll come from here, they'll come from there and all this other stuff. And then all of a sudden they realize like, oh, oh, all right. So we're bowing and showing respect and there is layers of the story and why we do what we do, but it really comes down to be, becoming the most effective or, or, or getting the most effective movement from ourselves and comparing ourselves to yesterday and being a better version of ourselves. And it's a bigger thing. Oh, got it. And then all of a sudden there's not, um, there's not that anxiety of like, Oh, I don't want to 
want to like not, I don't want to bow to the wrong person and I don't want to do the wrong bow and I don't want to this. And, you know, it's like, Hey, Hey, we're all good. You know, at the end of the day, we're a bunch of, you know, hairless apes in pajamas trying to strangle each other. Like, Hey, if you don't think that's funny, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Right. So, you know, just, just get in it. Yeah. You'll start sweating. We'll have fun. And that's, that's kind of been a, a, a real rewarding thing of keeping a, you know, keeping the respect for the, the story and the lineage alive with every student that, that comes in, you know, I want them to feel, you know, that, Hey, like this isn't like, you're, you're not here by accident mm. and this is where you are in this story. So the more you learn about this, the more value it is for you to be here, you know, cause you're in this line, you're part of that story and all of the techniques that's, that's the other half. Right. Mm. So everybody goes through this moment of, you know, in, in every martial art, you just get to this point where you're like, all right, I've done the kata, I've done this, I've done that, I get it. I just feel like I'm hitting a wall. Mm-hmm. Creativity, I'm just hitting a wall, you know? And then all of a sudden, you just start Googling a professor or a training partner or this or that, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, wow, and then the story, right? Well, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is so young. It's so well documented, and it's fractioning or fracturing off mm-hmm. into better stories in the peripheral that weren't highlighted before. So now people are like, Oh wow, actually my lineage is really cool. Mm-hmm. Like, and this is why I do these moves. Cause this guy fought Valetudo. There was no jujitsu. It was fighting was it, you know? So people are really coming into their own with balancing where they sit and their technique and their lineage and the story. And they're, they kind of go together real well. And I, and, and I think it's important. I mean, you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't do anything half ass. Mm-hmm. Do everything whole ass, right? Yeah. <laughs> What are you doing to continue that story, to make sure that the story being told about you and about your students and about their students is even more compelling and dynamic and, and um, worth reading? And worth reading, yeah. Well, you know, I I, 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 I kind of minimize a lot of my story. I just put enough I in there. Noticed. Yeah, I, 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 try, I mean, well, you know, jujitsu just, it really helped me in my life in so many, in so many aspects. And I hate to be that cliche of like, oh, jujitsu saved my life. Everybody says that. And it's true, you know, but for me, it, I mean, it, 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 it facilitated everything. Mm-hmm. It facilitated everything. I mean, when you do something harder than you've ever done for longer than you've ever done, you start getting confidence in every direction. Of like, oh yeah, I can do that. Oh yeah, yeah sure. I can, oh yeah, I can do that. So it, it just, it, it opens up possibilities that you've never, you've never imagined. And it's, it's something that I think when, you know, when we do, when we do class, I always throw in, you know, you know, uh, talks about each person. That's why in our gym, we have big banners of our lineage all the way across our gym. Mm. And so they're, they're like, well, they're bigger than life. They're like seven foot tall, you know, big blown up deals. And it gives them these are people. Of people of, of the lineage all the way from me to Jigeru Kano. Oh, cool. And so I, I try to at least once a week, you know, as I'm, as I'm teaching in, you know, either before we bow out or before we bow in, I'll, I'll give a background and why and the technique mm-hmm. and lace it to the person and explain a little bit about them. And, um, and then all of a sudden you just kind of watch like, Oh, Oh, Oh. And I go, look, there's so much information about these guys. I'm like, we have links on our, on our website. You can go and read more about them. I have little bios on, on each of them, but they're so interesting. And I'm like, I, you know, don't just focus on me. I mean, my, I'm least interesting compared to all these guys, right? These guys come from different times, like focus on them first. Right. I mean, I'm here. I'll, I'll talk to you. It is what it is. But, um, you know, as far as, you know, Rick Lucero, I mean, you know, Rick's been close family friend for, for years, 15 years. And without Rick, I would have never started jujitsu, you know, and his background is crazy. They should make a movie about the guy. He's traveled all over the world, fought Valetudo at the beginning. I mean, he was the first American to win a, uh, a, uh, a Valetudo in Brazil mm-hmm. and it pandemonium place just blew up. Yeah. Nobody wanted to see that. Right. And he was, you know, he went through his brown belt with Hickson, um, all the way up to brown belt with Hickson and then, uh, Hickson and uh, Hickson's son Hawks and passed away. Um, Rick and him were close friends. Mm -hmm. So when, when he went back to Brazil, um, you know, to, to just get his personal matters square, um, Rick was still hot and heavy. Like, Hey man, I need to fight. Like I, this is what I'm doing. I mean, he's just, he's, you know, he didn't look at this the way I look at it. 
you know, he was just this just nonstop eternal pugilist. I mean, if you were going to thumb wrestle, he was like, okay, start <laughs> stretching. Like he took everything serious. He's still that way. He's, he's a wild man. And, you know, he's, he was, I mean, you know, he was amongst, you know, the, the, the greatest of all times and, and icons. He was mm -hmm. in, he was in the middle of it. I mean, he was Mark Kerr's, you know, jujitsu coach, mm -hmm. you know, the smashing machine. I mean, I mean, and Rick's tiny and they would do takedowns for an hour straight. I mean, good luck. I mean, Rick was 165 pounds, 170 pounds. Mark Kerr was like 260, you know, and they just go bam, 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 you know. And I mean, hearing these stories, you know, we're fighting in, in the, you know, I think it was either the Ukraine or somewhere in Eastern Europe. And him and Boss Rutten are in a Unimog in the winter. Him and a bunch of fighters, but him and Boss Rutten were getting transported from one side to the other to the arena to where they were going to fight. You know, Boss falls out the back. You know, and he's got a I mean, great story. I mean, just wild, wild stuff, just you know and he and he lived it so when yeah. when he showed up i mean the you know the the story behind me being able to train with him you know i i'm i'm i'm, I'm with a handful of other cops we're in a boxing gym in mojave valley which is just i mean that's where i mean if they, if if there's hell it's somewhere in between uh <laughs> baghdad and mojave valley as far as heat wise you know but but i mean i'm, I'm just kidding i love uh, i love that area but uh, I mean, best people in the world because they're tough as nails, right? You have to be. You have to be. Yeah, you're gonna get selected out. Yeah, and we're in this boxing gym, right? In uh, in in uh, in Tommy's boxing gym, and you know he's turned out some Olympians, and you know these guys are tough dudes, and they're looking at us cops, you know, and we're all kind of out of shape, and you know we're watching videos, and you know this before stuff was on your phones, you know, so we're watching these little you know DVD players. Yep. Oh, I guess we'll try this, and okay, all right, well, all right, let's spar. And we hurt each other. We had no idea what we're doing. And then Rick walks in one day, puts on his black belt. Hey, he was teaching class. We're like, you are. We have no idea what we're doing. Like, we're hurting each other. Please help us not hurt each other. So he started that way. And he's like, I don't really want to start a gym. I don't know. I'm kind of done fighting. I, he was living in Vegas. And, you know, and he was, he was still fighting. And, you know, and everyone kept saying, oh, you're Pastor Prime, Pastor Prime. And he was like, I'm just good to go. I'm still good to go. So we... You know, basically tell him, hey, man, if you don't open a gym, we'll burn your house down. We'll get away. <laughs> you know? And he's like, all right, fine. So he starts a gym and, you know, it's, you know, literally, you know, one inch puzzle mats on the floor at an old Napa auto parts store Love it. on the concrete. And we're and there's not a person in there under 200 pounds. And we're doing judo. Boom. He pawns mm -hmm. the Bam. So if you didn't know how to break fall, you were done. Yeah, I mean, you were done. I mean, there was, it, it wasn't, it wasn't who who was the best it's who was who was left after after all that training and it was kind of wild because you know it, i mean he turned out some monsters man that are still around and still trained and still are as you know as as relevant as they could ever be right yeah. and the way rick trained is you you know yeah he was teaching you stuff but you felt like you were at his training camp mm -hmm. you were a partner for him to tune up on Mm -hmm. and you know he wasn't mean to anybody or anything like that he was such a nice guy still a nice guy but i mean he just didn't mess around i mean it was legitimate i mean we had a puke tree out front and you know we're in the desert it doesn't rain you know it rains maybe three days a year you know during monsoon season and there's no there's no foliage there's no trees anywhere right and this one tree giant and lush because we puked on it every day there's tons of guys running outside blah, throwing up and, uh, you know, I mean, it was just, it was unreal, but that, you know, that was, that was the luck. That's where, you know, I, I, I don't feel like anything's by accident. I'm like, mm. and he's, you know, Rick's, you know, I think he's the fifth non-Brazilian to get his black belt in jujitsu. And, you know, so he's, he's one of those dirty dozen guys. And, you know, most of those guys have, you know, at that level, you know, like, you know, Roy Harris and, um, um, Chris Howder, all these guys, you know, and these guys, you know, walk on water in the jiu-jitsu community and they you know have you know up to 100 black belts or more you know yep. rick has nine you know what i mean nine he just gave his ninth you know a couple months ago because he just wasn't done fighting he's like i'm done he's like he's taught at a bunch of places but he's like yeah we're good we're gonna get a bunch of people a brown belt and he's out and leave it to a brown belt and he'd do that all the time because he was all you know all over the world and uh you know he's now he just kind of i think is figuring out his relevance he's like oh he's like I guess people really do care about 
what I'm doing. It's like, yeah, man, like you're like a big deal, you know. I've been telling you. Yeah, I'm telling you. I've been telling you, you know. I told him, and I'm like, man, someday they ought to make a movie about you because, you know, he's he's not shy. I mean, he'll tell you stuff that you know most people probably wouldn't say about about themselves. Mm. He'll he's a hundred percent honest. I mean, he's, and that's I think one of the things that really attracted me to him because you know and, and trust him because he's never lied to me never lied to me some stuff i wish he did like but he never <laughs> lied to me you know what i mean and uh and he's just you know he's just a he's one of the realest people you'll ever meet and that and, and i value that as much as if if not more than just being nice right sometimes you're nice or you're harmless right i'd prefer somebody being real and know where i stand i prefer that yeah. and uh and you know he's he's always been that way so i think that's part of the reason i always like, oh, I don't really, I, I prefer not to teach. I prefer not to teach because, you know, I mean, he, he didn't really like teaching. I mm. still, I still think he doesn't like teaching, but he does. He, I think he, get, now I'm understanding the satisfaction he gets when he sees mm. what he's building and his gym in Arizona. Now, you know, uh, uh, his first female black belt, uh, uh, Kim Anderson. I mean, she's a monster. She's, I mean, she, she'll fit in my pocket, but she'll, I mean, she'll destroy your knees and nothing flat. You know, she's one of the best I've ever seen. And, you know, and, and I, and I trained with her, she's from up here, you know, I trained with her up here and, uh, and, you know, it was so awesome seeing those two get together. And I was like, these are two of the highest level black belts I've ever seen. And now they're running their school there. And, you know, with Rick, there was a high attrition rate because it was just so hard. And just, I think it needed just Kimberly's touch because mm. Kim is a phenomenal coach. She's really smart. Uh, she's a little more diplomatic, you know mm. what I mean? So she, you know, and uh, in, in approach to teaching and, uh, and I mean, with them together, you can't help but love them. So their, their gym has just exploded oh, that's great. and the work ethic still max. It's just now it's probably a little smarter instead of keeping mm -hmm. people, you know, cause like when I, I can't even tell you how many times in the olden days we'd be training and you know you'd hear you'd hear it sound like a wet shirt tear and then everybody stops and looks over their shoulder and somebody tear their you know their bicep rolls up you know yep. or you know they're you know pull a hamstring or something yep. and and i mean and zero zero sympathy zero sympathy came out of rick hey you you better get to the you better get to the hospital that, that's just a bicep tear. You'd be fine, but you're going to need surgery. You better get, mm. you tell your buddy, take, all right, you keep, we get back in the role. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, that's. Intense. You ever seen the movie Unbreakable? Uh, Bruce no. Willis? No. no. no, the, no. The, the, the part of the premise at the beginning of the film is um, the villain does all these horrible things knowing that the attrition will be really, really high, but yeah. someone will rise. They'll find yeah. someone. That's kind of what it's reminding me of. Like, let's go super hard because yeah, most of them are going to wash out, yeah. but the ones that don't will be. Yeah. And that's exceptional. It, and it's, it's, it's weird because I'm, when you think about tough people, like when I think about tough people, like oh, Rick's tough, like Rick is tough, you know, like Kim, like I watched her belt test, like, man, she is tough. Like, you know, uh, I mean, you know, Mike Kanzaki, Rick's first black belt. He is tough as nails, you know, Every black belt Rick has, they're tough as nails. I don't consider myself tough at all because I'm looking this way. Mm -hmm. And it, it was super funny. I was, I was training at, um, at, or I was teaching at the gym up north. And, uh, and I randomly, you know, I'm, you know, we're, we're doing, uh, doing a really hard warm up, and, you know, we got our belts around each other. We're pulling people as we're running. And I, I planted just as, uh, just as my partner leaned back and then and tore my calf. So mm. like you have two heads of your calf and my calf yep. rolled up to the, to the yep. same side. And I thought he kicked me and I was like, Oh, and I was like, you kick me. And he's way far back, you know? And I'm like, Oh, and I went and I dug a couple more times. And, Ooh. And I was like, all right. And it swelled up and made my, made my pants tight, you know, yeah. like down to my leg. And I went, Oh shit, this is bad. And so I continued to teach through the, through the, Oof. you know, through the deal. And one of the, one of the ladies in class was a doctor and she's, you know, she's a monster too. And she's like, I think you need to get that checked out. And I was like, oh, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. And I, I mean, it got bad and I couldn't. And then I figured out, you know, I yeah. went to the doctor the next morning and I mean, my calf swollen, is purple. swollen. And I mean, you know, it's I, my whole foot's purple, you yeah. know, and they were like, oh yeah, you gotta be on crutches for, yeah, what they say? Six weeks or you something. You have to reattach it or? 
No, so the the lower head tore to the upper head. Yeah. So there, so one calf, one calf looks normal. One calf is right across. Mm -hmm. And I said, ah, is it gonna is it gonna fully detach? And they're like, oh. <laughs> and they're like I, and I'm like, should I go? Do I need surgery to pull it back down? Yeah. And they go, ah, you're kind of okay. It's like a partial tear for your bicep. You know, like it's still functional. It's not sometimes detached. that's worse for sure. Yeah. So I was like, okay. I'm like, all right. So I taught class the next day, and and then you know, and and. I was on crutches for about six hours and I was like, no. And it just in my mind, I'm like, no, I deserve this. Like I've somehow, some way I've done probably done enough shit in my life. I deserve this. And I'm just going to, yeah, I'm good. Probably shouldn't have planted. Probably shouldn't have exploded. Probably should have been smarter. It's my fault. I, I'll own it so much easier to handle. And then, uh, and then the, that doctor, she goes, Hey, she's like, hey, I think you should, you should not, not train on that. And I was like, why? She goes, where's your crutches? And I'm like, oh, they're in the car. And she goes, are you using them? And I'm like, ah, I use them in the morning. I'm like, God, they're pain in the ass. I'm just limp around. You know, and she goes, you know, people are, you know, and it, was, it wasn't my first injury there, you know. And she goes, you know, people are going to assume they keep training through injuries that you're going to, you expect them to. And I was like, well, yeah. And she was like, uh, and I was, and then we both kind of came to this realization. I was like, holy shit. i like, I get this from Rick because I've watched Ooh. Rick tear his shoulder out stuff his arm and continue to train in practice and just because it's practice mm -hmm. right and like you know that culture has always been in our like our lineage is that way right yeah. so like i didn't think it really affected me because you know like i'm i'm a very very I, I like i said i'm my natural reset i'm a soft individual my favorite thing to do is sit on the couch eat cookies with the family and cuddle with the kids that mm -hmm. like if i could do that all day long that's what i would do but I mean, when it comes to jujitsu, like I ah, just re temper and harden up. Like uh, you know, and, and Rick used to always say, "Hey, you got extra parts. You tear something, you got extra parts. You're fine. You're built. You're built. You get through it." So, so did that conversation with the doctor that that realization did that change anything? Not a damn thing. No, no way. No, I never. No, I went back to the doctor at my or a month later um, at a tighter test, and they like they they kind of freaked me out. And they were like, or not a tighter test, a dime. D dimer test to see if I threw a clot okay. and they were like, Oh yeah, you need to go in right now to go get an ultrasound. And I was like, Oh shit. I was like, maybe, Oh man, I'm old. You know? So I get there and they, they were like, the guy's like, no, I don't see anything. They checked all checked everywhere. And he goes, yeah. He's like, do you bruise a lot? And I was like, yeah. He goes, and I go, well, yeah, I'm fighting every day. And he goes, Oh, Oh, well, you'll never pass a D dimer test. He's like, it just shows, you know, it's bruising. And, and I was, and he goes, so, you know, most people don't have to be like, they're not mm. in physical contact all the time. And I was like, oh, I feel way better now. So when I went back for my for my month checkup, you know, he was like, yeah, I walked in and I was fine. I mean, I was mm. totally fine. And he goes, you're not on crutches still? And I'm like, no, I'm fine. I'm like, I run. I'm fine. He goes, I've never seen anybody, like, recover like that. And I'm like, well, it wasn't easy. It hurt, you know. And I'm like, and it's still... You know, I can still feel it. I can mm. feel where the crease is, where there, it's not connected anymore, and there's a dent. And I said, my calves look funny, but, I mean, well, what are you going to do? You know, I'm not a calf model. <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> he goes, well, he goes, that's, he goes, and, and he's he's an athlete. You know, he was a real high-level athlete. And he goes, well, he goes, I don't tell this to a lot of people. He goes, but, he goes, if you get an injury and you just push through it, he's like, you, your, your body gets stronger. He goes, but most people, they just... All how how does payments. every animal on the planet handle right. an injury? Right. They, they don't, they don't abandon life. They no. don't have crutches. They deal or they die. Those exactly. are the only, it, it, the only ways it's going to happen. 100%. And you know, you know, I mean, I'm not, I mean, I'm not. That is not to... medical advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not trying to sound like a tough guy or anything like that. I just, you know, I mean, we live in a first world. It's so easy. Life is so easy for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't run a lot. I do everything in the gym. Mm -hmm. All my, all my output is in the gym. Um, I, you know, I, I would love to, you know, love to get out and walk more. And when I do, I'm not sore, you know, like most people like train up for stuff. I don't have to, cause mm -hmm. I'm always in the gym, you know, mm -hmm. I don't lift weights cause I'm lifting people. Like, I feel like I'm putting in work that makes, you know, life pretty easy. And when I, you know, when I think about how we live life, I mean, you know, I lived in Afghanistan for, for three years, you know what I mean? Like 
I did PSD over there in in Herat, Afghanistan, which is. But most very... people wouldn't describe it as I lived in Afghanistan. Oh, oh yeah, you know? I did. Oh yeah, it was. They, they, and yeah. and yeah, you're living there, but that's not that's not the verb most people are going to use. It's yeah, right. Yeah, I, yeah. It's kind I'm of not a, Afghan. I look that way, but I'm not. You know, <laughs> it's a kind of a consistent theme, and what you're talking about is just kind of like gently surrendering, embracing yeah. whatever it is. I mean, it's easy. PSD being personal security detail. Yes. Yeah. So I, I protected diplomats, um, you know, all over, all over Herat, Afghanistan, mm -hmm. Kabul, um, you know, traveled to Maz Sharif. It, it, it was, I mean, Herat was my favorite. I mean, mm -hmm. that was the best, um, you know, what? The, um, you know, it reminded me a lot of Arizona, uh, mm -hmm. climate wise, it was beautiful. Um, Afghan people are, just phenomenal people they're so resilient man they're so tough um yet so loving and you know and, and i'm a i'm a christian being in a muslim country seeing how islam is you know at home i was always treated well yeah. people and, and and you know when i was in iraq i felt like people would yeah i mean i was in baghdad and and um, i was at camp shield and the on the cusp of Sadr city. And, you know, we had, we had some Iraqis that were, um, that were embedded and, and I feel like their, their level of education was higher, um, in Iraq, but also, and also their creature comforts before the war were higher. So I think they, they weren't as, as, uh, as a culture, as like you see what, you know, what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. Like Afghans, like if they don't like you, you know, like, you know, like they're looking, burning holes in you. And you're like, that guy doesn't like me. And they're like, no, I don't. They're like, I can respect that. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. But if someone's being nice to you, they're not going to stab you in the back. I never got that from Afghans ever. They were, they were great people. And Iraqis were great people too. I just felt like there was a little more cultural swing. Like, oh no, we're good. We're friends, my friend. We're good. And then, yeah, they're, but you know, maybe not. Maybe, maybe they really didn't. You weren't good. And maybe, yeah, you know, so. But I mean, people are people. It's the same everywhere. But I felt like in Afghanistan, or in Afghanistan, things were just. Um, I, I was a guest in a Muslim country, and mm -hmm. I and I got to see Islam um, in a good light. I, I got to see it well, um, and then, you know, by the people that I interacted with, I also saw the other side that was not so good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And 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 uh, and that was that was a little different. But um, I also again. You know, we were a small villa that had, you know, very few people there and, you know, people from Colombia, Peru, um, El Salvador, and, you know, some of the best people I've ever met in my life that are some of the, some of the truest patriots I've ever met that, you know, like, I mean, we knew whatever happened there, mm -hmm. you know, that we're, we're not getting credit for it. Any of us didn't make it back. They, they didn't care that none of that would ever hit the news. You know what I mean? We were nameless, you know? And we weren't getting any support, and then, but we knew that we we're contractors. Mm -hmm. It was what it was. But uh, the 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 guys that were there were the best guys in the world, man. They were, I mean, they, they were unreal, unwavering. Gave their hundred and ten percent, loved our country to the fullest, and yet gave Afghans one hundred percent the respect that that most people would assume we wouldn't, but we did, you know, because we lived we lived there with them. And then, you know, we had, we had a lot of people from India as well that were, they did a lot of our services in our camp and, um, just, just, it, it was a great experience mm -hmm. and, it, and it was nice, but it was, it was for a long time. So, I mean, it, I was there for, you know, I'd be there for three months, come home for a month, be there for six months, come home for a month, be there for four months, come home for a month, you know? So I spent a lot of time there, but the, the nice thing is I got a lot of solitude. It, it wasn't. You know, a lot of people you can get lonely and just have loneliness, but it would and, and, and be in um, just a, in a bad place. I found it. I, I really got to kind of work on myself and without jujitsu. I mean, I rolled every day there. I mean, really? oh, yeah. I mean, on the roof of the consulate, which is no longer the consulate there. They, they attacked it. But, um, you know, we we're on the roof up there, met some awesome dudes. Um, we had a on the roof of, of our villa, which had a like a two foot wall and you fall four stories. <laughs> and there was a few times I'm grabbing guys. No, don't come back, come back, you know? And, uh, and I know I'm friends with those guys still today. You know I mean? You know, I, that's how I ended up out here, you know, doing, um, 
you know, doing pr uh, protection work out here for, you know, uh, high net worth individuals and, mm -hmm. and, you know, tech execs and things like that. So it, it just, you know, those, those bonds are real tight. And I mean, those guys are amazing. I mean, I, I think about those guys every day. They're just great people. And, uh, and the ones that didn't come back, you know, those guys were, you know, I mean, some of the best ever, some of the greatest people. And, and it was a bummer seeing some of those guys not get, you know, any recognition whatsoever. So, but again, you know, I don't know how we get on that, that that subject, but yeah. So how do we was, get on any subject? Yeah, right? we just we yeah. just kind of go and we see where it takes us. Surrender to the process. So yeah, wherever right? you're at, that's yeah, you are where you're at. Yeah, there you are. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of always been my uh, my saving grace is like, wherever I'm at, I'm home. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah, that's how mm -hmm. I do things. How can people get a hold of you? How can they find you online, social media, website, any of that? Um, yeah, Journeyman Grappling um, on Instagram, journeymangrappling.com on uh, on uh, on the web. Um, all the all the links and all the stuff mm -hmm. is there. It takes us takes you to all the social media. Um, we're in uh, Ording, Washington, right? The best small town in Washington. So, Wrestler City, USA, um, and we're right there on Main Street in the old Cope's Pharmacy. Yeah. Feel free. Come by anytime. Yeah. Yeah. And check on online for the schedule and everyone's welcome. Awesome. I'm going to have you close us up in just a moment, but uh, to the audience, you know, thanks for, thanks for hanging with us and check out Roland's website and what he's got going on and check out whistlekick.com and whistlekickmarshartsradio.com and make sure you're sharing these episodes with people. So, I was asked the guests to close us up. So, you know, how do you want to leave things with the audience? What What do you want them to come away with? And as the the final the final bit today. Well, that's a heavy one. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be. Yeah. Wish you the best. I wish you all the best in everything that you do. And uh, and you know, try jujitsu. At least just try jujitsu, right? If you're in any martial art, try jujitsu. It, it it won't help supplement or, or it won't hurt to supplement. But uh, they, it, they know how I feel about cross training. So there you go. And uh, and just kind of enjoy the process and, uh, you know, work hard, love hard. Right. So, so I great. appreciate the uh, appreciate the time. It was a great awesome. conversation. Thanks, man. Thank you, guys.